Okay, let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Hainam Pavanasa Pakning. Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Make sure it feels good. You can test different ways of breathing. After all, it is your breath. No one's forcing you to breathe in an uncomfortable way. So why breathe in an uncomfortable way? You can create a sense of well-being here simply by being sensitive to what the body needs in terms of the breath. And when you've got that sense of well-being inside, it's easier to think about the well-being of other people. We have that chant that we chant every day. May all beings be happy. And the question is, will all beings be happy? Well, we can't answer that, because everybody has their choices as to how they're going to look for happiness. And it seems that a lot of the world is determined to create suffering for themselves and for other people. And the only way we can stop them is to help them, one, set a good example, and two, make it seem that it's in their interest to actually look for genuine happiness rather than for looking happiness in all the ways that are destructive that we see all around us. So when we say, may all beings be happy, it's basically for our own minds to keep in mind that this should be our intention when we're dealing with other people. May this person be happy, truly happy. And if there's anything I can do to help that person understand the causes for happiness or act on them, I'll be happy to do it. But you always have to realize that other people's choices are beyond your control. Even people who are close to you in your family, they have their independent ideas. They don't have to ask their permission of you to think what they want and say and do what they want. There may be some constraints that you can put on them, but they have a lot of choice on their own, particularly the choice to think and the choice to, uh, as their way to view things. The Buddha was once asked, is all the world going to go to awakening, or one half or one third? And he didn't answer. Ananda, who was sitting nearby, was concerned that the person who asked the question might think, well, here's the Buddha asking an important asked an important question, he doesn't answer. So he pulled the person aside and he said, suppose there was a fortress that had one gate, and there was a wise gatekeeper, and the gatekeeper went around the fortress, and he didn't see any hole bigger than, even big enough for a cat to slip through anywhere in the fortress, aside from the, the gate. He wouldn't know how many people were going to go in and out of the fortress, but he would know that if anyone goes in and out of the fortress, they have to go by the gate. In the same way, the Buddha understood the way to true happiness and was happy to teach it, but he didn't know how many people are going to go in and go out, because we all have our free, freedom of choice. So you want to make sure that your freedom of choice actually is in line with your aspiration for true happiness. And true happiness means a happiness that doesn't depend on the suffering of others. So that means that you have to keep other people's happiness in mind, with the realization that they will be able to choose whether they want to be happy or not. There's some, some things you can't force on them. And you're not going to wait for the whole world to be happy, or to the prospect that they can all be happy, for you to try to work for happiness. You've got to say that this is my choice right here, to take on the causes for true happiness, see them through in my thoughts and my words and my deeds. And maybe it'll have a good impact on the world, and maybe it'll be just like a stone thrown in the water it just disappears after a while. The ripples are there for a bit, and then they disappear. You never know. But you've got the choice. After all, it is your happiness that's at stake. So make sure that when you think about your happiness, you realize you can't cause other people to, to suffer for the sake of your happiness. And we can think in those terms, we can live with one another, instead of fighting the way we do all the time. So be responsible for your own happiness in a, gen happiness in a genuine way. And you can find that you can be a lot more peace at what go with, your, with the world around you. Now, whether the world itself is going to be at peace, that's something else, but you create your peace. And it's, and it's working piecemeal by, like this, bit by bit by bit, that the world does get improved. 